Ooh, I like it. Wow. It's cool. All right, so what I want to do is I go over how to solve um, or find the missing values of this triangle. So what we're given over here is, is we're given a triangle and we're given all of the side lengths. All right? But we're not given any of the angles. So what we learned before is obviously you use the law of sines. And in the law of sines, it was a proportion, right? The side length over the sine of its opposing angle was equal to the side length of the opposing angle of all three of uh, the other angles, right? And their opposing side length. But we have a problem with this because we can't apply use that proportion because we don't even have a ratio that's complete, right? You can't even set up a, a proportion that would have only one missing values because you don't have any of the angles. So to try to use this, Kara, for um, law of sines is not going to work, all right? So what we're going to have to do is look into this uh, by using the law of cosines. And there's a couple little tricks that we need to do when using the law of cosines, especially for a problem like this. You could say, well, I don't know what a, b, and c are. And you could see I wrote down the law of cosines over there. Well, for each one of those, they have a cosine of a, cosine of b, or cosine of c. So you could say, well, you could just pick any one you want to and solve for that angle. But the problem that we're going to want to um, come up with is we don't want to arbitrarily just pick any angle. There's one angle that I want to be able to solve for, first of all. And I'll kind of explain a little bit more about this later. But the, first, the only angle, when, I'm try when I have three side lengths, the angle that I want to solve for first is going to be the angle that is going to be potentially my largest angle. All right? So you can see out of all these side lengths, here's 10, here's 7, here's 15. The angle that is potentially going to be the, well, the angle that will be the largest is the one that obviously opens up to the largest side length. Does that make sense? OK. So you're going to want to find the angle C. And I'll explain why we're going to find angle C first and why it's important to find angle C first rather than finding angle A or angle B. So let's go and write in the formula for the law of cosines for angle C. So we have C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2 times A times B times cosine of C. All right, so now what we're going to do is just pl evaluate, plug in our values that we have, and then solve. So we have C squared, 15 squared equals 7 squared, plus B squared, which is 10 squared, minus 2 times 7 times 10 times the cosine of C. So 15 squared is going to be 225 equals 49 plus 100. And then we have 2 times 7, which is uh, 14 times 100, is going to be negative 140 cosine of C. Does everybody follow me so far? OK. Um, so then what we're just going to look at is we can combine these like terms. So we have 225 equals 149 minus 140 cosine of C, right? Then we subtract. And I'm sorry? Well, no, then you'll divide by negative 140. Right? So this subtracts out the 0. And then this is going to leave us with uh, 76. Then we divide by negative 140. So then we say divided by negative 140. So therefore, I'm going to have negative 0.54. 2, 9 equals the cosine of C. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, we're trying to find the angle C. This is going to be way too much of an a small of an angle if we're looking into, as far as this um, graph, that's a really, really small, cute angle, right? We said it has to be the smallest angle or the largest angle, so that's not going to make sense. Remember, to find the angle C, it says cosine of my angle C equals this value. So to find the value of C, I'm now going to have to use inverse cosine of negative 0.5429. So I do inverse cosine, second answer, and I get C equals 122.88. So I get C equals 
degrees. Okay, so why is that so important for us to be able to do this? Well, now for the remaining sides, to find our remaining angles, now what we're gonna have to do is apply the law of, law of sines, right? And the important thing about noticing this is, remember when we applied the law of sines, we're gonna have to evaluate, for, we're gonna have to use again the inverse sine, right? We're gonna have to use the inverse sine to find these two, to find one of these angles. And remember using the inverse sine, we had to determine was it acute or, was, or did we use the obtuse angle, right? Remember when we had the ambiguous case? We had that, you know, those possible two different solutions. And what we always determined was, since we're figuring out this value, we know that these other two angles have to be acute. So you don't even need to worry about, even though we have three sides, it's not a side-side uh, um, -side angle. But it's important for you guys to understand, now that I have an obtuse angle, now that I found the largest angle, I know that these two angles are acute. All right? Or e even if this was acute, you still know that these other two angles also have to be acute because this is the largest angle out of the three. Okay? So it's just important to always find the largest angle first because then you know that your other two angles are always going to be acute. It's much easier to do that than to say, oh, I found an acute angle. The other two, one could be obtuse, one could be acute. It gets a little dicey working it that way. So now, to find angle A or B, we can just use the law of sines. Um, I'll do A. So 7 over sine of A equals 15 over the sine of 122.88. So by solving for sine of A, sine of A equals, we could do 7 times sine of 122.88 divided by 15. So I get sine of A equals 0.3919. And then I take inverse sine, second answer. And I get A equals 23.07. And I did. Right, OK. All right. So then we get A is going to be 23, 23 degrees, 0.07, which obviously we know it has to be smaller than um, has to be smaller than C. And now we just go and evaluate for B. So now that we know that two angles, I can see I can use the triangle angle sum theorem, which B is going to now equal 180 minus 23.07 minus 122.88. So, because remember, all angles in a triangle add up to 180. So now I can just do 180 minus 23.07 minus 122.88. And we can say it's 34.05. So B equals 34.05 degrees. Okay. And there you go. So apply the law of cosines, find the largest angle first, get that angle, plug it in, use law of sines to figure out your other angle, and then use your triangle angle sum theorem to find the third. Cool? Can you memorize what? <coughs> no, you, if you look on your half sheet of paper that I gave you guys with uh, 